Good day folks, Sean here from Air Photography. So in today's video, we're gonna go over how to create a night lapse and star trails with your GoPro Hero 11 Black. Now, if you have an older GoPro, you can still follow along because the settings are pretty well the same. Just on older GoPros, the menu system is a little bit different, so you might have to do some hunting around. We're gonna talk about the settings that I like to use when creating night lapses, but we're also gonna go over some tips for framing your shot, setting up the hardware, and a few accessories that you may wanna consider to make the job a little bit easier. If you're brand new to GoPro, you've just recently got one, Creating a night lapse on a GoPro is super simple. GoPro has made it very easy and it can actually produce some really stunning results. Now there's two types of night lapses you can create. You can create a video night lapse and a photo night lapse. In this video, we're gonna focus on the video night lapse just because it is the easiest. It's basically point and shoot. When you're done recording, you have a video file waiting on the memory card that you can go ahead and edit further or share to social media. If you do a photo night lapse, it is a little bit more labor intensive, but it's good if you want to get the absolute best quality because you can go in and edit each individual photo. You can batch edit them in something like Lightroom and then go ahead and compile them afterwards. I am gonna make a tutorial afterwards, my workflow when editing a photo night lapse, but for this video, we're gonna focus on the video mode. So with all that said, let's just jump in and take a look. So now before we jump to the settings, let's take a look at how to set your camera up. So the first thing to consider when you're gonna be filming a night lapse is location. A couple things you wanna keep in mind is that you don't want a lot of light pollution. If you're in the middle of a city, it can be very difficult to get a nice night lapse because all the lights around you are going to make the image really washed out and drown out the stars. So ideally you want to be out in a rural location without a lot of light pollution. And you can actually get a little stealth with that. You can actually just go out to the country somewhere, set up your camera in some bushes and uh, start recording and then come back the next morning. I've actually done that several times. You just have to make sure it's gonna be in an area where there's not gonna be anybody kind of uh, rummaging through and coming across your camera. The second thing is, is that you want some kind of stationary subject. Like for example, I have a tree here in front of the camera. And the reason being is that it's gonna to allow to show the movement of the stars. For example, if you just point it straight up at the sky, you're gonna get a nice video, but when you're playing it, it's just gonna look like a photograph that's being rotated. By having something stationary like a tree or the horizon, a building or some kind of monument, it's just going to make it a little bit more dynamic. The third thing you're going to need is some way to mount your GoPro so it stays perfectly stationary. As you can see right now I have mine on a tripod, but you can use any type of GoPro mount or smaller tripod, something that's just not going to allow for any movement. Because when we start recording on the GoPro, we're going to be using an extremely long shutter speed. So that means any movement is going to make the images blurry. Now the next thing you're going to need is a power bank. Because when we film our night lapse, we're going to be recording all night. I usually start mine at dusk and stop recording in the morning when I get up. So, you know, the camera is going to be recording for anywhere from 6 to 8, maybe even 10 hours. So the battery that's built into the GoPro just won't last that long, so we have to have it plugged into some external power. As you can see here, I'm using an Anchor power bank, and I just have it in this pouch here. And I like to hang it on the tripod, that just keeps it out of the way. So the next thing we're going to have to do is plug a power cord from the GoPro over down to the power bank. And this is something else that you may want to consider. In order to plug power in, we're gonna to have to open this door. And that's gonna leave all the ports, the memory card, everything susceptible to moisture. You never know if you're gonna get some rain overnight or even just a really heavy dew. So there are a couple things you can do. You can wrap it in plastic, plug your cord in, wrap it in plastic. But there are some accessories you can get. We can remove this door and replace that door with this one here. This is an accessory that GoPro sells. It's uh, called the pass-through door, I believe it is. And as you can see there, it now has an opening so we can plug in our USB-C charging cable. So it just attaches like normal. We can then close it. And now we can plug in our cable. And it's not going to be waterproof like this, but if you happen to get a light rain overnight or some heavy dew, the moisture is not going to get inside because there is a rubber membrane in there. If you own the Media Mod, you can also use it because it has those rubber doors at the back there, those rubber flaps, so it'll keep all the ports closed as well. You can then plug in the power and again it'll keep everything protected. 
but this is fairly expensive so unless you're going to be using it for some of its other features I wouldn't recommend purchasing it and then it's just a matter of plugging in the power cable down into your power bank and uh, that's going to keep the GoPro powering all night so at this point let's hop over to the GoPro and we'll see how to set the camera up so let's go ahead here, we're going to jump to the GoPro and we're going to take a look at some settings that you may want to adjust. So the first thing we're going to do is swipe over to go to the time lapse shooting mode. And from there we're going to switch it to night lapse. And we do so by clicking on that pill button at the bottom. That's going to give us all our time lapse options. And what we want to do down there at the bottom, you can see it says night lapse. Now theoretically you could just select it and let GoPro just do all the work but there are a few things that we can tweak to make it look even better. Now to edit these settings, we're gonna select the pencil icon just off to the side there, and this is gonna bring up all the options. The first there is our resolution, but that's also how we can set our aspect ratio. And you can see here, we have the option to set it at 5.3K, 4K, or 1080. Usually I do mine in 4K or 5.3K, so that's kind of a personal preference. For the sake of this tutorial, I'm just gonna leave it at 4K. But what I do like to do is put it over to 4x3. That's going to give you more flexibility when it comes to editing. When you have it in a timeline, you can crop it back to a 16x9. But it gives you the option to add more sky or more of the static foreground if you're not quite happy with the way it's framed. On top of that, it allows you to add some motion. You can add some keyframes when editing. You can make it look a little bit more dramatic and it's not going to reduce any quality because you don't have to zoom in. The next there is the lens, what kind of field of view you want. I would definitely leave it at wide. You want a nice wide field of view to make it more dramatic. Beside that, we can choose our format like we talked about earlier in this video. If we select that, you can see we have it set to video right now, but we can switch it over to a night lapse photo. But we're going to save photos for another video because I'm going to go over more in detail how to edit them and compile them. Now the next setting is interval. And uh, for this tutorial, we're going to leave it at auto, but we can play with that depending on what you're trying to do. But just to get a nice night lapse, we're going to leave the interval at auto. We'll let the GoPro manage that. But what we are going to adjust is our shutter speed. Shutter speed is basically how long it's going to take the photograph for. And usually for most night lapses, I put it all the way up to 30 seconds. That's going to make sure the sky is nice and bright and it's going to show a lot of detail. Now, if there is a moon out or you have other light sources, like perhaps a street light or something, you may want to bump that down to a 20 second interval and uh, sometimes even lower. But it's usually a safe bet if it's a nice dark sky, 30 seconds is going to give you the best results. The rest of these settings, we're just going to leave alone. Scheduled capture, you're going to leave off duration just leave it at no limit you can see there it has a timer of three seconds that's basically once you hit the shutter button here at the top it's going to wait three seconds before it starts so that's good that gets rid of any camera shake now we're going to scroll down and go to protune what i like to do is set the bit rate up to high that's just going to give us a better quality video and the other thing and this is important is we want to adjust our white balance now this again boils down to personal preference. What we want to do is cool it down a bit. And what I like to shoot at most of the time is 4000 Kelvin. But you can go down a little bit lower if you like. That's going to make it a little bluer. But it usually looks pretty nice when filming a night lapse. So I would recommend 3200 or 4000. I have done some at 4500 and that looks pretty good as well. So that's something you just may want to experiment with to see what you like best. But for this tutorial, we will put it back to 4000. Now the next options here is our iOS minimum and iOS maximum. I like to set mine at 800 for both. That's gonna generally give you good results no matter what the conditions are. You can go all the way up to 1600. And if you have a really, really dark sky, that might be beneficial. Now, the only problem with going to 1600 is that it could introduce a lot of noise, especially if you do have a lot of light pollution. Your image could be a little overexposed and there's going to be a lot of noise. So ideally, try it at 800 first if you're not happy with the results, if you find it's not quite bright enough, not enough detail, then try the next one at 1600. The next option here is sharpness. I usually just leave mine at medium. Some people like to put it down to low. And the benefit of doing that is you can add a bit of sharpness in post when you're editing. Uh, but usually I like the way it looks at medium, so that's what we're gonna leave it at. And for color, I just leave mine at natural. Again, that's gonna be personal preference. You can put it on a flat color profile, and that way you can have more editing flexibility. So again, it's all personal preference. 
Now at this point, we just line up our camera the way we want. It's a good idea to do it before it gets completely dark. Maybe get everything lined up, then just power your GoPro off and wait for the uh, sun to set. Now that we have all our settings inputted, all it is is a matter of hitting the record button and it's gonna start to film your overnight night lapse. Now, if you start it in dusk, the first few seconds of the night lapse is gonna be pure white as everything is way overexposed. But then you'll see it transition into, you know, into the night lapse. In the morning when you get up, you just stop recording. And of course, you're gonna have the video of the night lapse stored on the memory card. Now, if you wanna get creative, you can actually create what are called star trails. Star trails look really, really interesting and can be a lot of fun to make. GoPro makes it easy because they have a pre-made mode for star trails, as you can see there under the time-lapse setting. And again, we can go into that to adjust things a little bit. Uh, the first thing we can do is set the trail length and we can have it at long, which is what I usually do it on, but you can set it down to short or all the way up to max. They actually have a button there where you can view examples. So there's the max. If we go to long, again, there's an example. And if we go to short, we can view an example there as well. That just adds a little bit of motion. But for the most part, when I'm doing them, I like the long look the best. And again, we can go in and set our resolution, 5.3K or 4K. And again, here we can set our aspect ratio. As mentioned, I usually shoot in four by three. Again, that just gives us some flexibility when editing, if we're going to be editing them. We can set our shutter speed depending on how bright the night is. I would stick to 20 seconds or 30 seconds. 20 seconds is if the moon's out or there's a lot of uh, light pollution in the area. And again, we'll go down to ProTune. And just make sure your ISO minimum and max is set to 800. Again, you can adjust that up to 1600, but that will introduce noise. And that's basically it. All you have to do is now again hit the record button and when you're done you're going to have a video on your memory card ready to be shared to social media or you can pop it into your favorite editor and uh, just kind of enhance it a little bit more. Now it's important to note that when doing star trails there is no option for photos. So as you can see folks it's quite easy to create a night lapse on a GoPro. Now there is one thing I did forget to mention during the setup and that is you want to check the weather before you start a night lapse. You don't want to get up in the morning to find out it became overcast and you don't have any star movement. Now, a little bit of cloud in the night lapse can look a little interesting, but you just want to make sure that it's going to be mainly a clear night. Well, folks, that's basically it for this video. Hopefully you enjoyed it and got some value out of it. Give it a thumbs up if you did. It's always greatly appreciated and we'll see you in the next one.